The next item is the mobility of the swelling. And the best example for mobility is the breast mouse. What's meant by the breast mouse? What's meant by the breast mouse? The breast mouse is a fibroadenoma. It is freely mobile inside the breast. This is typical benign example for the freely mobile swelling. Or maybe restricted mobility. Restricted mobility if it moves but it is restricted, not freely mobile. Or it is fixed swelling, usually fixed to a bone or adjacent structures. It is fixed, I cannot move. So maybe freely mobile, maybe restricted mobility or maybe fixed swelling. And the last item of the deep palpation is the attachment. What about the attachment of this swelling? The swelling is present, for example, in the subcutaneous tissue. Is it attached to the skin over or not? Just pinch the skin. Just pinch the skin, like in this photo. We pinch the skin away from the swelling. If it is freely mobile, it is, of course, it is not fixed to the swelling. Then about the subcutaneous, here we can use the muscle to put it into contraction. If the muscle contraction, for example, in the abdominal wall, if the patient contracts the abdomen when leaning forward unsupported, if the swelling increases, so it is parietal, it is superficial to the muscle. Or if the swelling, if the swelling deeper to the muscle, for example, in the deeper structure, the swelling will decrease in palpation, so it is deeper to the muscle. A question, if the swelling is within the muscle or it is fixed to the muscle, it will be moved, it will be moved like that. It will be moved in this direction, but not in this direction of the muscle fibers. It can be uh, 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 perpendicular to the muscle direction of the muscle fibers, I can move the swelling and when I put the muscle into action, it is restricted in mobility. Like this photo, this swelling is moved away, this swelling is moved away and when the patient contracts the pectoralis major, the swelling is restricted in mobility, that means it is either within the pectoralis major or it is, it is infiltrating the pectoralis major. Then fixed it to the bone, I cannot move the swelling, I cannot move the swelling away from, for example, the mandible. I cannot move. It is a piece of the mandible. So either it is mandibular swelling from the start or it is a tumor, for example, infiltrating the mandible. How will mandible hit the wahda? I cannot move the swelling. So either it is bony swelling or it is fixed to the bone. Again, pinch the skin. Put the muscle into action. If the swelling is superficial to the muscle, it will be prominent. It is deeper to the muscle, it will disappear. In the case of muscular swelling, how will it hold the muscle in action? Put the muscle in action. Low restricted mobility with muscle contraction, for example, in the case of breast cancer, which is invading the pectoralis major, before contraction, it is freely mobile. After contraction of the pectoralis major, it will be restricted mobility. And if it is fixed to the bone or arising from the bone, here it is whole bone I cannot move the swelling away from the bone, either it is bony swelling or infiltrating the bone. The next item is compressibility and reducibility. What's the difference between both? Reducibility is a character of hernia. You press the swelling, evacuate the content, like that, evacuating the content, it will not reappear spontaneously, but when the patient stands or cough or strain, the swelling will reappear again. This is a character of the hernia. But compressibility is a character of vascular swelling. Just when you press the swelling, it will be evacuated and when you remove your hand, it will appear spontaneously. This is the character of the vascular swelling. So, reducibility is a character of the hernia, but compressibility is a character of vascular swelling. Then, the effect of cuff. Cuff may induce impulse on the swelling. This is a character of hernia. Impulse on cuff due to sudden increase of intra-abdominal pressure. Impulse on cuff. Or swelling with cuff will increase in size. For example, the pharyngeal pouch or laryngeal seal increasing the uh, pressure inside the swelling. 
all this wind may show thrill. Thrill due to cough, sudden increase of uh, pressure, for example, sudden increase inside the vascular swelling, it will cause turbulence of blood, so you will feel a thrill. So the cuff may induce impulse on cuff, may induce increase of the size, or may induce a thrill. Your examination is not completed except when you examine for the lymph node. For example, a swelling in the mouth, you must examine the cervical lymph node. Swelling in the leg, you must examine the inguinal lymph node. Swelling in the breast, you must examine the axillary lymph node. So, your palpation is not completed except when you palpate for the lymph node. Palpate for what? Number one, is it significant or not? What's the meaning of significant lymph node? Significant means suspicious lymph node, suspicious for malignancy. The suspicious lymph node is a triad. Triad, talat hagat. Triad of number one, number one, painless and not tender. Number two, more than one centimeter. Number three, hard inconsistency. So, when I examine the lymph node and say it is insignificant, insignificant means it is tender, it is below one centimeter, it is soft or firm lymph node. Usually, it is inflammatory lymph node, but a lymph node hard, more than one centimeter, and painless and not tender, it is suspicious for malignancy, suspicious to be metastatic. Then, what about the size of the lymph node? Then, what about the number of lymph node? I palpate one lymph node, two lymph node. Then, what about the mobility of the lymph node? They are mobile or fixed? They are mobile or fixed? So, you must comment on the lymph node. You must comment on the, on the lymph node to complete your palpation. Again, to comment about the distal effect of the swelling. For example, swelling in the thigh, you must search for arterial compression manifested by ischemic manifestations, for venous or lymphatic, which causes edema. Edema, it is pitting in the venous compression and non-pitting in the lymphatic compression. And lastly, to search for nerve compression, for example, by foot drop, foot drop with infiltration of the sciatic nerve, for example, it will cause a, a foot drop. So I palpate or search for manifestations of either arterial compression, venous compression, lymphatic compression, or nerve compression or nerve infiltration. Then we come to percussion. After finishing the inspection and palpation, we come for the percussion. Our examples for percussion to percuss in a case of hernia. What? What's the content? It is resonant if the content is enterocele, intestine. It is dull if the content is omentocele or omentum. Another example for percussion is percussion, direct percussion over the manubrium sterni to exclude presence of retrosternal extension. Another example for the percussion, percussion for hydrated thrill, percussion for the hydrated thrill. Then the auscultation. Auscultation usually, usually, of course we can auscultate the abdomen for the intestinal sounds and so, but the most famous example for auscultation is auscultation over the thyroid for perwi. Perwi means machinery murmur due to AV shunts present in a case of Graves' disease to search for perwi in a case of thyrotoxicosis, especially Graves' disease. After finishing the inspection and palpation, percussion and auscultation, we reach for the provisional diagnosis. Again, the provisional diagnosis may be pathologic or must be pathologic, anatomic, etiologic and functional diagnosis as we mentioned before. Coming to the investigations, of course, investigations may be laboratory investigations and the aim of laboratory examination to assess the fitness of the patient for operation or to assess, for example, the etiology like tumor markers, for example. Then the radiologic investigations uh, usually search for the primary swelling itself and searching for metastasis in the case of cancer, searching for metastatic workup. And maybe after laboratory, radiologic, maybe endoscopic 
in a case of thyroid to do indirect laryngoscope. In a case of abdominal swelling, we may use colonoscope, sigmoidoscope. In a case of urinary, urinary swelling, we may do cystoscope and so on. So maybe endoscopic and through the endoscope, we can take biopsy. And the last is pathologic, which is the biopsy. The last is pathologic, which is the biopsy. What is the types? What are the types of biopsy? Biopsy may be needle biopsy or surgical biopsy. Maybe needle biopsy or surgical biopsy. And the needle biopsy usually may be fine needle biopsy or true cut needle biopsy, which is called core. It takes a core biopsy. True cut means core biopsy. And we will discuss later on the differences between fine needle and uh, core biopsy. Or the biopsy may be surgical biopsy. For example, excision. In the case of lymph node, I prefer to take the whole lymph node for pathological examination. It's called excisional biopsy. In the case of breast cancer, uh, with planned wide local excision, I may excise the whole lesion if it is small. Or it is incisional biopsy. I take piece or punch of the, for example, edge of an ulcer. I take punch or incisional biopsy of the edge of the ulcer. It's called incision biopsy. So types of biopsy may be needle biopsy or surgical biopsy and the needle biopsy, fine needle or core needle or true cut needle and the surgical biopsy may be incisional or excisional biopsy. And finally, wishing you the best of luck and good luck and see you in the next episode, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.